Niagara Falls In this video you will learn how the last ice age affected the formation of Niagara Falls. What role do the Great Lakes play in feeding the flow of water to Niagara Falls? What measures were taken to control erosion and strengthen the falls? How the phenomenon of frozen Niagara Falls occurs, what historical events are associated with it, and more. Let's get started. Niagara Falls has only existed for about 10,000 years, a brief moment in geological terms. When the last ice age ended, the massive continental ice sheet began to retreat. It was a huge glacier that moved like a bulldozer, grinding rocks and soil, deepening riverbeds and creating lakes. The glacier buried the old valley under glacial sediment and left behind the Great Lakes. The four upper Great Lakes, Michigan, Huron, Superior and Erie, contain 20% of the world's fresh water today, all of which flows to Niagara, which flows out of Lake Erie. Just 56 kilometers later it flows into the fifth lake, Ontario, from which, in turn, flows the St. Lawrence River, which lies 100 meters lower. This difference in height gives the river flow speed, strength and power. A shipping canal well end was built to bypass the waterfall. It allows ships from the Atlantic Ocean to enter the Great Lakes. Niagara Falls was reported to the world in 1678 by the French missionary Louis Hennepin. The name, Niagara, according to some sources, comes from the Iroquoian word, Anguiara, meaning, a thundering noise. In terms of average water flow, 5.9 thousand meters per second, Niagara Falls ranks second in the world after Victoria Falls in South Africa, which is located on the border between two countries Zambia and Zimbabwe. Although it is far from the world's highest waterfall, it ranks only 27th, there is no doubt that it is one of the most famous and visited place on Earth. Niagara Falls consists of two main parts, the direct American Falls, 330 meters long, and the more famous Waterfall Horseshoe, located on the Canadian side and forming a dizzying arc 792 meters long. Between them in the middle of the river is Goat Island, covered with trees. The waters around the island are shallow, and for many years it was a convenient observation point. The height of the fall of Niagara Falls is about 50 meters, but due to the pile of rocks at the foot of the American Falls, formed in 1954 due to a collapse, the actual height of the waterfall here is only 21 meters. Above the waterfall, the riverbed runs along hard dolomite, under which lie softer rocks, shale and sandstone, the river originally tumbled over a cliff about 11 kilometers north of the current location of the falls, but as the fast current eroded the softer underlying rocks, step by step the falls retreated, leaving behind a deep gorge. The waterfall has retreated by about 1 meter per year and today it is located 305 meters upstream from the place where the French explorer Louis Hennepin saw it back in 1678. Engineers are working on the task of reducing erosion in an attempt to control the flows of the falls, and the falls are now much more stable than they were in the past. At least half of Niagara's water is diverted through underground canals and pipes to nearby hydroelectric power plants. Their consumption greatly influences the volume of water, although erosion and waterfall movement has decreased, the falls still continue to recede and lower the water level of Lake Erie. Sometimes during particularly cold winters, Niagara Falls can freeze over. However, the sheer volume of water never stops flowing, but falling water and fog form ice on the banks of the falls and the river. As a result, ice flows up to 6 meters thick can form. If the winter is cold for a long time, the ice completely covers the river with an ice bridge. Until 1912, visitors were allowed to go directly onto the ice flow to view the falls from below. On February 24, 1888, a local newspaper reported that at least 20,000 people were observing the surrounding area or sledding on the ice flow. On February 4, 1912, the ice flow broke through and three tourists died. Huge ice flows can flow down the Niagara River from frozen Lake Erie. To reduce the flow of ice, an ice boom, a long floating chain, 3.2 kilometers, 
of steel weights, is installed annually on Lake Erie across the Niagara River in winter. The ice boom prevents ice from clogging the river and it is especially important for water-consuming hydroelectric power plants. However, one day on March 29, 1848, the flow of water above both falls was completely stopped for several hours due to an ice jam in the upper river. People were walking along the riverbed and retrieving objects from the river bottom. In addition, the flow of American Falls was completely stopped for several months in 1969 to determine if rock debris at the base of the falls could be removed to widen the channel, but this idea was later rejected. By the mid-19th century, tourism had become a major industry in the region. In 1929, Canada and the United States reached an agreement to jointly protect the falls area. Today, the falls on both sides have been turned into a grand amusement park. On both sides of the falls everything bears its name, cities, hotels, restaurants, casinos. Every year millions of tourists come to admire the majestic and terrifying beauty of Niagara Falls. In the evenings, beams from spotlights paint the waterfall in different colors. In 1941, the Rainbow Bridge was built near the waterfall and is used for automobile and pedestrian traffic. You can watch the waterfall not only from the shore or from the bridge, but also directly from the windows of hotel rooms, as well as from the observation and restaurant platforms of the 230-meter-high Skyline Tower. And on the double-deck steamer, which, like a cork bouncing up and down on the waves and at times completely hiding among the gloom and splash, makes its way in the abyss of boiling waters, you can get close to the bottom of the waterfall. It is for a reason that the brave passengers are given the famous raincoats to keep as a souvenir. The unbridled power and size of Niagara Falls was seen by some people as a personal challenge. Daredevils traversed the falls in a wide variety of watercraft, including barrels, boats, and enclosed capsules. One of the most famous death-defying stunts was performed on June 30, 1859, when Jean-Francois Gravelet, better known as Charles Blondin, walked over the falls on a 335-meter-long rope stretch to a height of 49 meters. Another famous incident occurred in 1901. 63-year-old schoolteacher and Taylor took a barrel jump from Horseshoe Falls and survived. Badly battered, she had expected fame and success and nevertheless died in poverty. Stories about Niagara Falls go on forever. Now it's your turn. Share with us your memory of this magnificent place in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to put likes and subscribe to our channel. Bye.